<clears throat> all right, first and foremost, I want to give all glory, honor, and praise unto my power, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Shalom to all you sincere other true believers. With today's lesson, I want to get into uh, just a few articles touching on things that's transpiring, you know, over here in America, Babylon, and pretty much, you know, in a lot of places out here in the world, but, you know, primarily on the day, um, you know, we have, uh, I have this article right here, uh, you know, it came from Newsbreak. Just four hours ago, it says a second wave of layoffs at Meta, which is the new name for Facebook, I believe. Right. <clears throat> and it says 10,000 jobs are cut. So they already did one wave and then they're doing another wave. And I think that's 10,000 jobs. So it says Facebook parent Meta is slashing 10,000 jobs, about as many as the social media company announced last year, late last year in the first round of cuts. Uncertainly uh, about the global uh, un un uncertainty about the uh, global economy hits the technology sector pr particularly hard. So, I mean, it is, it's a lot of jobs being cut, man. So this is even, this is the second wave, right? And they already, you know, X thousands of jobs already on the first wave, right? So you see, this is becoming a prevalent thing. And with us being in uh, uh, this this new age, this information age, this age of social media and technology, you have a lot of businesses that run off of what? Facebook, Instagram. You have a lot of businesses that, 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 that uh, primarily just deal with online, right? And they advertise, majority of the advertisement doesn't come from, I'm not sure if it, if majority it comes from uh, online. I would assume so in this particular age, but I don't have any like, you know, statistics backing it up. But I know, you know, maybe 10, 15 years ago, the majority of uh, uh, advertisement was from TV, you know, radio. So I would assume that now that we're in this different, I have this word zeitgeist, right? It says, uh, I'm going to just read it for you. It says, think about how something like, uh, I'm going to read a definition, the defining spirit or mood of a particular period of history as shown by the ideas and beliefs of its time. So a zeitgeist, right, it, it particularly uh, comes like every 10 years. Right. So every 10 years, you see like a different uh, 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 wave or a different uh, mood or vibe to that particular generation. Right. For those for those 10 years. Right. So it gives an example uh, with like Woodstock or something like that during the 70s. It was the time of like free love and, you know, spirit, and, you know, everybody just doing willy nilly. Like that was the zeitgeist of that time. Right. Um, the zeitgeist of the 2000s. I'm not sure what it was. And I was young then. But uh, I know uh, during the 2010 era to 2020, it was a lot of like, you know, um, <clears throat> technology and whatnot. And as well as in, uh, uh, in, in this technology, in, in this zeitgeist uh, as well, 2020 and up is a real is a real information age. Right. <clears throat> and we see that prophesy in that actually uh, in Daniel, the 12th chapter, where it says knowledge shall be increased because you have everybody that's that, that's basically. They, they're being put on, right? They got a, a smartphone computers in their pockets where you, you could just Google anything and double check somebody, right? You could just look something up if you want to learn about it, right? So in this particular time, something like this, you know, uh, uh, being restricted or, 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 or being hit by the recession, right? It, that's a big thing. You know, you got you got a, 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 a Meta, Snapchat, all of these different uh, uh, technology companies being hit. This is a big, big thing, man. And it shows you that what? This whole this whole age is coming to an end, right? This this is marking the end of Esau society with big brand name companies, you know, uh, 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 you know, having layoffs to the tunes of ten thousand workers. That's that that shows you that we here at the end, y'all. Right? I got another article right showing you that the scriptures are true, right? Because this this relates back to Matthew the twenty uh Salakia, Isaiah the twenty fourth chapter. It says the cost of living crisis seems sees some people considering suicide. Right. It says more people are contemplating suicide as they cannot cope as a result of rising costs. Charities have said charities support those with chronic. Yeah. So that's the point. Basically, more people are considering suicide. Right. And that goes also into uh, I have right here in Revelation, the ninth chapter says, and in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. I'm reading in the NLT and those in those days, people will seek death, but will not find it. They will long to die, but death will flee from them. <laughs> this is a beautiful thing. This is prophecy, man. It says the cost of living crisis sees some, because what would make a man want a man or a woman want to die? Not being able to feed yourself, not being able to fulfill your, you know, your, your, your lustly uh, desires, you know, in, in, in this society, you know, you know how these people are. They, they don't uh, resist any uh, uh, lustly desire. They give in to everything. So not being able to fulfill those desires seems like hell to them. Right. So, you know, uh, uh, not being able to pay for, 
you know, food, you know, uh, uh, shelter, the basic uh, bare necessities for life. So this is what the Heavenly Father is doing to humble these people, man. Right. And they had these people in a state where ultimately they want to they want they want to give up the ghost, man. So this is this is prophecy being fulfilled, man. So I want to go ahead and start right here and um, with these uh, with these layoffs and whatnot. I'm going to go ahead and um, bring this out. You know, of course, Isaiah, the 19th chapter. And I'm going to start verse 14, Isaiah 19 and 14. Right. And you see all of this is like you, you see how all of this is happening together. The, the whole SVB bank, uh, you know, uh, uh, and that, that, that bank was actually lending out to a lot of tech startups and a lot of tech companies like Roku. They had a a, a, a bank account with with the SVZ, uh, SVB bank. Uh, what is it? Uh, Central uh, Silicon Valley Bank. Right. They had like tune of like 400, 450 million there. And now, you know, only 250,000 of that was insured through the FDIC. So they took a big hit on that, you know, if they don't if they don't get that refunded to them. That's four hundred and fifty million dollars. And that's a well-known company like Roku. Right. Now they may have had other accounts in other places, but it's still to take a hit of four hundred and fifty million dollars. That's a lot. Right? So Isaiah 19 and 14, it says, How Adawan has sent a spirit of foolishness on them. So all their suggestions are wrong. They cause Egypt to stagger like a drunk in his vomit. So every suggestion that they come up with this place, right? They they you know, they said that they're gonna bail out. Uh, 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 the SVB bank and you know banks and stuff like that, you know. So that, so that way, even if you know people lost, you know more than the uh, insured amount of two hundred fifty thousand, you know they're gonna get it back. But it's not gonna come from taxpayer money. So where are you gonna get that money from? That's gonna cause for more inflation, which has these people in the dire straits in the first place, right? So all their suggestions are wrong. Verse fifteen it says there is nothing Egypt can do. All are helpless. The head and the tail, the noble palm branch and the lowly reed. So these lowly people and the, and the people in the uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, in the, um, in the government house, which are which are like considered like kings and princes, right of the of the society, all their suggestions are wrong, man. It's nothing they can do. They all helpless. Verse sixteen it says, in that in that day, Egyptians will be as weak women. They will cower in fear beneath the up uh, upraised fist of Hadawan of heaven's armies. Just to speak the name of Israel would terrorize them. For how the ones of heaven army had laid out his plans against them. This is all the heavenly father's plans, doing these things, man. You know, destroying these people like this. All right, because what he's doing is he's weakening his enemy. Like I gave the analogy the other day, what you, what, what you do when you're in a boxing match with, with, with your opponent. You wear him down with a couple jabs, right? To the point where, you know, you know, you know, you uh, uh, you tiring him out. And then basically now he on the ropes and he just waiting for that one killer blow, like that one killer blow. And you knock him out, you knock him out and he, and he down for the count. But ultimately what the Heavenly Father is doing is he's wearing Esau out. He's he, he, he's tearing that confidence away from him, like it says in uh, Job, the 18th chapter. So all of these things is the Heavenly Father's doings. And, and, and it's his plan to actually destroy Esau, Edom. But before he ultimately destroys him with those hypersonic missiles, he's wearing them down first. Right. And this is a beautiful thing because now that once proud Edomite, a uh, 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 bold, patriotic American spirit is fleet in this place, man. You really don't see a lot of these uh, 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 once patriotic Edomites that were so proud to be Americans. Right now, it's really a disgrace because look at look at look at who America's ran by. Right, you see their leader. You see what state America is in. Right, all around America is just being you know uh, uh, laughed at, man. Right. So let me go ahead and grab this Isaiah the twenty fourth chapter, and I'm gonna read it in verse uh, verse four in the NLT. It says. The earth mourns and dries up, and the land wastes away and withers. Even the greatest people of on earth waste away. So was not America considered one of the well the greatest country on earth? Right? They did. They considered themselves as such. Now even they're wasting away. The earth suffers for the sins of its people. For now, for they have twisted uh, the heavenly Father's instructions, violated His laws, and broken His everlasting covenant. That's America, man. You got a place called Sin City, man. Right. They, they, they proudly uh, uh, boast about, you know, going against the Heavenly Father and, 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 and even so much as to uh, uh, like basically to, uh, talk evil about his own book. Right. Which is the Bible. Right. The scriptures, you see, and they twist the Heavenly Father's uh, instructions. They say, OK, well, man and woman supposed to be together because that's, that's what God said. Well, I, well, Esau says, OK, well, a man and a man can get together and we're going to we're going to justify it and we're going to make it uh, uh, lawful in our courts. Right. You see, they twisting the instructions. That's not how it's supposed to go there. And so that's why the earth is suffering, because the sins of his people. Right. It says, therefore, a curse consumes the earth. Right. And this is a curse. Poverty is a curse. Right. 
you know, not having the bare essentials that you need for life, that's a curse. You see, verse six, it says, therefore, a curse consumes the earth as people must pay the price for their sin. They are destroyed by fire and only a few are left therein, left alive. Right. And that's what's ultimately what's going to happen to this place. First, the heavenly father consumed the earth with what? By a flood of water. Then he promised, you know, that he wasn't going to flood the earth with water anymore. And that's why we have the covenant with the rainbow, you know, showing that, that the heavenly father won't flood the earth again. But he ain't said he wasn't going to do it with fire. Right now he gonna burn it. He gonna burn. He gonna burn up America Babylon with fire. You see. So, verse seven it says the great vines waste away. There is no new wine. All the merry heart, all the merrymakers sigh and mourn. These people are sighing and mourning, and they really wish to die. Right. Wish we had that article. A lot of people are what contemplating suicide. Right. So it says verse nine, verse eight. The cheerful sound of of tambourines is still. The happy cries of celebration are heard no more. The melody chords of the harp are silent. Gone are the joys of wine and song. Alcoholic drinks turn bitter in the mouth. This is beautiful. This is what the Heavenly Father is bringing upon this place. This is what we got to look forward to for these devils, right? And what does the scriptures tell us, right? Brute 4 and 30. Take a good heart. So may I have a good mind, O Jerusalem. Who's that? Yashra Allah, us, right? It says, for, they, for he that gave thee that name will comfort thee. How is he comforting us? By bringing destruction upon our enemies, right? And then also at the same time, raising us up. Ultimately, to the point where I don't want to rob this out, we endure until the end, then we receive salvation. And then we got the real one. We got the real W over these devils, man. Right? Verse 31, it says, Miserable are they that afflicted thee and rejoiced at that fall. Ain't it, ain't it beautiful when somebody that, that, that was rejoicing over your fall, they start falling, and now you like, yeah, dickhead. I'm, I'm, I'm Excuse my language. But yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Look at you. Look at you now. You know, you, you was happy over my fall, and, and I ain't even do nothing to you. Right? And they'll look at you, right? And that's what's happening with Esau and Edom, right? Miserable, miserable are the cities which thy children serve. Miserable is she that received thy sons, right? So the point is, miserable are the cities which thy children serve. So these cities are now miserable. They're in a miserable, uh, 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 you know, estate, dire straits, man, right? And our, and, and our, and our fam, our, our forefathers, they served this place, man. We serve this place constantly on a daily basis when we go to work. You know, a lot of the jobs that we do, even if they nice, cushy ones, you know, ultimately we still serving these devils, man. Right. And we serve these cities. But now these cities are what? They're miserable. It says miserable is she that received thy sons. What's that? America. Right. For as she rejoiced at thy ruin and was glad of thy fall. So she should be grieved for her own desolation. That's what's happening now. This place is being grieved for her own desolation. Why? Because now America, which is one of great, a great society, great civilization to these people. Right. Now is a nightmare, and these people are, are, are grieved and mourning for it, right? For I will take away the rejoicing of her great multitude. This is what the Heavenly Father going to do. Her pride, which was these people, it was these Americans were are the most prideful people on earth. What's happening now? Her, her, her pride shall be turned into mourning, right? And that's the point. That's what the Heavenly Father is doing to this place. He's turning this place into a, 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 a he's turning the people, the spirit of this place into a mourning, a mourningful spirit. Right, if that's a word, a very, very, very mourning, uh, for a uh, mourning filled spirit in America, because a lot of people just ain't got it. They they effed up, they jacked up, man. And then, and then, uh, and then on top of that, the worst of the worst, they don't got the spirit, man. Because if you can, if you got the spirit, you can endure. But if you don't, you done. All right. So verse thirty five, for the fire shall come upon her from everlasting, long to endure, and shall be inhabited of great uh, of devils for a great time. Right, so that's the point. Ultimately, the Heavenly Father, the end of this place, America, Babylon, you know, like it say, I believe in Revelation, the 17th chapter, where it said, uh, you know, America's allies are going to shoot missiles upon this place, and this is going to be done. And like it say in Malachi, the fourth chapter, it says, uh, uh, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the wicked and all that do wickedly shall uh, be burned as stubble. Let me see. Malachi chapter 4 and 1, for behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. And all the proud, yea, all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up and save how to want how to want of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Right? So that's the point, man. But what does it say for us? Verse 2, but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow as uh, grow up as calves in the stuff. And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be as ashes under the soles of your feet. And the day that I shall uh, do this, saith Adawan of hosts. 
So that's the point, man. This is what we got to look forward to, and that's what they got to look forward to. So what do you want to continue to do? Be those who should, who, who fear the Heavenly Father, which out of our desire, we continue in that, in that lot, man. Continue to fear the Heavenly Father, love him, and continue to uh, abide in his fear and do what he delights in so that way he can delight in us and, and, and deliver us, man. And, and we be at peace with, with, with our power because that's the, that's the best thing, right? That's what you should desire. So I'm going to go ahead and end off there. I don't want to write this out. This, this lesson was edifying, exhorting, and comforting. And I want to give all glory, honor, and praise unto my power, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, the Wadi Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, for having me do this lesson. Shalom, y'all.